Hi guys, in this video I'm going to introduce importing data into R. So in previous videos we created some vectors, then we created a data frame all within R, mostly to learn about the data structures and the objects. Okay, But most of the time your data is going to come from outside R. And one of the most common file formats data gets stored in is called CSV, which stands for Comma Separated Variable. And luckily, R has a nice, clean way to import this type of data. Okay, so let's go through this and we'll do an example as well. All right, first thing you want to do before we learn how to get that data in is we want to think about where is that data, and R needs to know where that data is. So, a good place to put that data, that CSV file, is by using the get wd command that says get working directory. This tells you the default place that R will look for any, for any data sets. Okay? So for me, this is the directory under my documents folder that R will go and look if I don't otherwise tell it to go look somewhere else. So I should try to make my life easier, at least when I'm starting out, to throw any data sets, in this case any CSV file that I want to use, into this folder, into this documents folder. And you can follow the path uh, C blah 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 finally in documents. Okay? So now that I know that that's where my working directory is, I can make my life easier, take a second, go and copy and paste that CSV file into this folder, and now come back and continue to kind of actually read this data set in. All right. If you don't do that, you can still import your data, except you have to explicitly tell R the directory where the file is. In other words, you have to type something like this. And of course, it's going to be for me if it was like, let's say, on my desktop, I might have to say forward slash desktop, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then the name of the file. So I make my life a lot easier by throwing the file directly into my working directory. So you can use this command to see where your working directory is. And you can change your working directory by going File, Change Working Directory, and just changing it. All right. But it usually starts you out somewhere pretty common, like your documents folder, so you can use this. Now that I know my data is there, I've already pasted an example file into the documents folder on my computer. You should check where it is on your computer. Now I can read the data in. So first thing I want to do is I want to name this data something. I want to assign a name to this data frame that's coming in before I just read it in. If I just read it in, it'll just spew out all the data all over here and fill up my screen and perhaps many other screens. So let me call this DF3, data frame 3, whatever. Let me assign the name data frame 3 to this data that I'm about to import. So how do I import a CSV file? Well, I use a command called read.csv. Open close parentheses. Now, within these parentheses, in quotations, I have to put the name of the file. So for me, I'm going to import the used cars.csv dataset. So notice I put the name of the file in quotations. I also put the format CSV, and then I close the quotes. And I didn't have to put any kind of file path, any kind of directory, because I put my file into my working directory, making my life easier. All right. Now I put comma because there's one other command that's you, one other argument in the read.csv function that's useful, and that is strings as factors. And I'll explain what this is. We're going to set this to false. Now, why do we set strings as factors to false? Well, read.csv will convert anything that looks like characters into a factor. So if you have 
columns in your data set or variables in your data set like gender it'll automatically convert it to a factor which is nice but it will also convert things like name to factors and you don't necessarily want names to be factors okay so by setting strings as factors it won't create convert any Thing to a factor and then you have the choice to then create factor variables okay so let's set this to false because by default if we don't type anything it's set to true okay so let's try that actually let's try not typing strings as factors you and hit enter let's look at df3 but be careful if we look at df3 there's a lot of data here it's going to fill up our screen and we won't we don't want that so let's first just look at the structure of df3 using the str command so we see that we imported a data frame with 150 rows 150 observations six columns six variables here they are year an integer right model price mileage color transmission different types of vectors here we have model as a factor with three levels price an integer mileage an integer color and transmission both factors okay notice no characters here it converted all the characters to factors all right and then also notice that um, if I were to just type df3 and hit enter I would fill up this screen and some and I don't want to necessarily do that right so one way to just look at the first few lines of the data set is to use the head function so head basically the head tail there's also a tail function so if I just type head df3 it'll give me I think the first eight rows and all the columns so first six so I get to basically get a little snippet of my data see what it looks like see what the structure of my data looks like okay so I see I have my five sorry yeah six columns here and I, since I use the head command I get six rows so here the first car is a 2011 uh, model whatever that is price mileage of the car it was a yellow car and it's automatic and so on so that's just example one okay now let's go back slightly and look let's create a new data frame let's read the same data in let's call this data frame four because I want to look compare data frame three to data frame four and this time let's use that strings as factor and set that to false okay and let's look at the structure of df4 you'll notice that everything is identical except that it did not convert model color and transmission to factors it left them as characters okay now we may want to convert one or two of these to a factor but it leaves the choice to us and so maybe this is a preferable way to go about it so let's compare the structure of df3 to the structure of df4 and you'll see they're identical except for this factors here are characters here and we talked a little bit about factors and characters in the very first video on vectors so you can go back to that and and maybe watch it a second time for a little more nuanced understanding either way the important thing here is we now know how to import CSV data set into R and then work with it so we don't have to create our own data here this is really important reading data into R is the first step of data analysis you need to get the data first before you can do anything to it so you should pay attention to this and um, especially the get wd function will help you to kind of make this process a little easier all right so hope this was helpful till next time have a great day